You're listening to Sarah Hagen Backstage, with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick, both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen Backstage. My guest today, Mike Mangini, is best known as the drummer in the band Dream Theater, but he is also an incredible clinician, teacher, and studio drummer as well. We are going to talk today about returning to tour life after the pandemic, his recent Grammy win, the process of auditioning for Dream Theater, and his reunion with Mike Portnoy. So come along with me as I catch up with Mike Mangini. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Sarah. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? You know, going with the flow with this whole new environment. And now that uh, we're used to this kind of a thing, it seems fairly normal. (laughs) It does, right? I I feel like so much of our lives are lived like on Zoom calls and on, on, you know, phone calls and all of that. Um, But it is nice to be able to see each other's faces. I think that's one great thing that came from the pandemic is like, you know, some new technology for us to use and keep in touch with each other. Absolutely. Even though um, I'm sure, you know, like it was for me and most people that I know, it wasn't all that easy to put it together and it took some time. And even though it seems simple, it's not as we have to, you know, we have to multitask. We have to be everything, the everything person that has to do with getting the sounding right, looking right, the whole bit. So, yeah, it's great, yeah. though. It's normal now. Absolutely. And so speaking of which, um, how during the pandemic, how did you adjust to being home and, you know, the changing on, and the uncertainty of all of that? You just mentioned um, having to figure out technology, but you did a fantastic job of that. Um, yeah. Tell us how you adjusted. Well, the first thing. I did is I uh, got rid of any emotion that I had having to do with this, you know, being upset about it or thinking something I got, Mm. I I get rid of that with big decisions by writing down what my options are, you know, in a big kind of a index card looking cork board kind of thing. And I just, I just wrote down things that I could utilize um, tasks that I've been blowing off for 10 years and I, I, I wrote them all down. And one thing led to another, led to another. Is really how I did it. But what I did, I had to do uh, really through many relationships and through making some decisions. For example, I had not reprinted my books. And mm-hmm. they were in demand. And I kept promising people. It was odd because I didn't do that much social media. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to get this going this year. All right, I'm doing it next year. Okay. I never did it. So yeah. pandemic hit. That was, that was the, that moved up to the top. And it's like, I'm getting this done. So I had to find someone to help me make that happen. Cause it wasn't that I didn't feel like going to the printer or something. It's that my co-writer, Frank Dolan passed away. And so I didn't have everything I needed to get it done. Right. And I had to find, you know, I found another student, that was able to help me do that. So anyway, um, the point is I wrote down things like that and I had been a teacher forever. So I'm like, well, how am I going to do this? And, mm-hmm. you know, I could talk about that till the cows come home right now with everything I had to do, but I'll just outline it. So I wrote these things down, reprint the books. I have to sell them. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn how to code uh, to make a store, but not in the sense of like Python code, but code for the application, which is, um, it wasn't easy and they don't, you know, people don't make it easy because they want you to hire other people and hire them to do it. And you just got to figure this out, which is fine. Yes. But, you know, so I uh, started teaching, I had to get the zoom interface and all these interfaces. I mean, look at what's behind me. That didn't take, that did not take three weeks. Okay. Yes. It was a lot longer than that. Then I had built up over time. I hired, um, a, a real person to code, to integrate, I have an amazing system. I, um, I, I called in some favors and some requests and made some new friends and used relationships to get the gear I needed. So blah, 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 blah. I built this whole world here. So I'm selling my services. I'm selling products, staying in touch with people. I'm practicing, um, recording, making, you know, videos. I don't know. I've already probably spoken 
too much in this little clip, but the uh, point no. is. <laughs> no, that's it, great. I, you, you, you have done so much. It's important to note like what you've accomplished over the past mm -hmm. couple of years, because it is, it is big. Like what you're doing now, you're, uh, you've adjusted to the new technology and, um, and it, we've all had to adjust a lot over the past couple of years. Our industry, there was a lot of uncertainty. Like when is it going to come back? Is it even going to come back? And, and if it does, what will it look like? Right. So, right. so you did exactly what was necessary and we're super smart about it. And I think a lot of people can learn from that too. Well, I just write things down, get them out of your head. That's an old school, like Tony Robbins thing. He had that personal power series decades ago. Yes. And that's the, that's, that's the simple thing I pulled out of that was just get it out of your head, write things down, especially when there's emotion attached, you know, and there's most decisions we have are emotional and then we get, it's just, we want things to be a certain way, but you can't have what you want. Right. You can't have what you want all the time. You got to make do with the things you can control. Yes. versus the things you can't. So you write it down. And I, I've always done that. I mean, I have cork boards and I, mm -hmm. you know, I put push pins, index yes. cards, lists. And I, I'm not afraid to make tons of mistakes and crumple it up and throw it away. So that's, that's how I did it. That's, that's how great. I it. That's great. I like that. I like that advice. I'm the same way. I like to make lists. I like to write things down. So I want to talk about some of the good things that have happened to you recently, because there have been some super cool things happening, Mike, and I'm so excited for you. One of them is the cover of Modern Drummer in January yeah. of this year. Yeah. Yeah. Could you want to list them? Because I can comment on each one. How I, I don't know what you're. Yeah, I was just going to say, so we have the Modern Drummer cover, and right. you just also won a Grammy with Dream mm -hmm. Theater, so we have mm -hmm. to talk about that, and um, and it just came in the mail because I saw a picture. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, and there's so much going on with the with Dream Theater and the touring, but um, the cover of Modern Drummer was um, was nice because the article was a description of uh, like a group kind of thing with, with our engineer, Jimmy T and how he and I got that sound, which is the first time for me. And um, I, I was really happy because it's, this record sounds more like me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as just other ones, even through my career don't, I mean, I didn't, I don't sound like the way I play There's sound layers put on me that I, you know, I have no, didn't know I have nothing to do with all that stuff. I, you know, and, and none of it really sounds like me, even with the, the editing people do the changing of things. It's like, but that's, that's been what I've been hired to do for a long time. So I just kind of, what am I going to say? You know what I mean? But this one in particular was a buildup because Jimmy T and I have, had been working together a lot because he was our monitor engineer. And he also, uh, I trusted him to, um, take my solo album to another uh, on the, another level. Um, and, but the thing is, we talked a lot. So this Modern Drummer article focused on the things that we did together such that he and I got that sound. Mm -hmm. He and I got that sound. That's what you're hearing is largely happened to us in, in all that work that we did. And then, and then um, uh, this time, uh, you know, Petrucci's still been the producer in Dream Theater. He... He turned over the next step to uh, Andy Sneap, who did a, a really, really fantastic job putting some putting some icing on the cake, you know. So it was a group group thing, and it was really nice. So that that article was uh, that was it was fun to have that out there, and it's important to me too because it, of course, having to do with sound that opens up a lot for us to yap about, you know, from symbols to things I, you know, my solo album, my sound, my zoom, my videos, all that. But without getting into, yeah, without getting into as much of that, you know, you'd mentioned the, the, the Grammy and I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> oh my God. This is, this is funny because this has been like taken around the Stanley cup. It's, it's no joke. It's not like it's some, you know, trophy from a, from a, from a balloon popping contest or something, you know, this like, <laughs> oh, little league, you know, 
<laughs> and, yeah, unless it's, it's the, and, unless it's yeah, unless it's the real kind of trophy where you have to earn it and you finish in first place and then nobody else gets one. That's the real mm -hmm. trophy, right? <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's not a cheap, cheap thing. But anyway, um, this has been fun. I've been carrying it around to parties and events. And people are having an absolute blast. And what's cool about it, as I open this, is that, ta-da. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. It's beautiful. Oh, oh. Yeah, it is. And it's heavy. It's no joke. This thing's like a piece of hardware. Every when the picks it up, says, "Oh my gosh!" And I have to, you know, let them know so that they don't drop it. I don't want, you know, don't want it to be like the old school Bruins return the Stanley <laughs> Cup with forty five dents in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so right? yeah, you don't need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so it's a it's a it's been a lot of fun and it's been very rewarding because again. It's group things seem to be the most fun celebrations in life uh, for me, you know, with sports and uh, even school band and groups and things. It's, you celebrate it together. But my handing this to people, you know, friends and family, it's like, you know, what's cool about it is most of them have had something to do with that, you know, throughout my life, making sacrifices for me, providing for me giving me guidance, letting me know what they really think and what mm -hmm. they think is best for me and not what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. So many people. So it's like that feels nice with those um, with those people that I hand it to. Uh, I, I kind of feel that. It's like, you know, it's, there you go. You, you, got, you, you, know, you have a piece of that. So that's been a lot yeah. of fun, you know, and – the, the last thing is that it was a group win. It was for performance. It wasn't for best song. Mm -hmm. it was, you know, you're not like singing um, a classic vintage police tune or all these Foo Fighters songs. It's not the same thing. Um, this was a Grammy for performance, very specifically for performance. So nobody had anything to do with it other than us five in that room performing. Nothing mm -hmm. nothing that preceded it has anything to do with it because it was for that moment. So whatever we had done before, it's like it doesn't have anything to do with that moment. And what that moment was for me, as I remember walking through the double doors into the live room where my drums were, it was the recording room too. Um, I know the last thing I said was, let's get in there and play like we're 18 years old and we don't care. We don't care about anything or anybody except us having fun, knowing that we know what to do together. Let's just go have fun. That's it. I don't want to even overthink it. I went in and played the this kind of skeleton beats for the alien as I was mm -hmm. showing I was showing Jordan. I said, I got this idea with 17 and these all these things that we can do with 17 and started playing it. And from there, everyone did their thing. Everyone did. I mean, even mm -hmm. James on the, James on the, um, on the monitor, cause he was in Canada zooming in, which he could do because it's, you can't do that as musicians cause it's all out of time, but he was able to zoom in and say, well, he was going to fly all that way and do what? Sit, sit in the room and once in a while chime in some things. Why not mm -hmm. just be home? Right. Just be home? So anyway, that's what it was. Um, it's, it's a real, it's a really nice feeling. It felt better than I thought it it ever could or would not only because it's heavier than I thought it was, <laughs> but because it's, it's nice handing it to people that had something to do with helping me out. And, and it was a group win. So, you know, so that's, yeah. those two that is so sweet. I love that. And I have been seeing other people post pictures, uh, mutual friends post pictures. I saw Bill Morgan posted a picture with it. And oh, it's, yeah. that makes me, that makes me super happy. I love that you're that you're sharing that. And, and um, you know, there are lots of people in our lives who have a lot to do with our success and it's nice to yeah. recognize that, but congratulations. So what a big, big win. Thank you. Amazing. And those, those two things that you mentioned, the modern drummer article and the Grammy uh, are group group things and it makes them feel really nice because you can share them. So Absolutely. excited about it. Yeah. And, and the other thing too, that you mentioned is the touring and I'm so happy yeah. that you are back out there touring. You just got back from a run with dream theater and it seemed like, you know, not, not business as usual, but it feels like things are getting back a little bit. And I'm wondering how it feels to be out on the road. Like the, the energy from the crowd, is it different? Does it feel different than pre pandemic? Um, I guess perception perception change changes things, 
And, um, you know, I think I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I know that I'm very, very grateful for being out there. I'm sure I'm quite sure. And I, you know, everyone in our group is and the other groups and, and, and things like that, but just being grateful makes you see it a little differently. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was extra special, but I lost, I can't be alone here, but I lost my stage chops. I mean, just for the familiarity, I lost my chops being a frequent flyer. <laughs> I, I like, where's my adapter? And oh my gosh, I forgot. I can't believe I started packing two weeks before just so I wouldn't forget. I went over list after list after list. And sure enough, there's a little something I forgot here and there, but I lost my chops for flying, the yes. airport chops, the transportation chops, the being on stage and getting in the bus. I'm like, uh, okay, I got to have my stuff in my bunk and put my things over here. And, but, but we, we went back to where we always were like we each have a bunk and like it's unspoken. You know what, where your bed is. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun like that, you know? Yeah. And uh, so it was, it was, it was nice to have it back. We were all grateful for it. Great seeing smiling faces and seeing faces. That was the best in most places in a couple places. They did that other thing. That was like, ugh. but um, you know, everyone did the best that they could with the with what they could control, right? You know, and yeah. um, it, it it was really nice. And sure enough, the physical chops, the familiarity, just running a show like that. I mean, we have such a detailed uh, production. I mean, it's like to the like to the nanosecond, everything's working, and you know that's on my back. Because I, I'm, I'm the timing person that I that links to the external time that makes these things work and all of that stuff. So, um, just getting back in that, you know, like, okay. But being grateful really had a nice effect on the perception. That's great. That's so great. Mm -hmm. And I love that you've been sharing all this like behind the scenes content um, on tour and just kind of like showing what happens backstage and during sound check and. Um, your content with like the other band members, it's been really enjoyable. Oh, good. Because I, I have fun, you know, it's like we are out the, on the road for a long time. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a prankster, but I'm silly. As you know, I'm <laughs> yeah. always good. I'm always good for something zany. Yes, you so are. That's my whole thing is real life. Zany. I don't tell jokes. I, I have a ton of fun with things that don't seem funny at first. It wouldn't maybe not to most of them make them funny and make it enjoyable for everyone. I put signs up, uh, whatever. I don't want to get into the whole thing, but I like <laughs> to have a good time. Uh, and I like to make people laugh when I can. Uh, yeah. You know. And that comes through too. And yeah. you know, so, your other, your Instagram posts that you've been posting, I, I recently saw one with a bunch of Super Bowl rings that you had and, um, yeah, that that looked so much like so much fun, and I'm just wondering, like, whose rings were those? Those those belong to a guest of one of my high school buddies. We had a a golf, you know, a golf outing recently, mm -hmm. and um, uh, one of one of my buddies buddies had them from working on on the team on the for the, the New England Patriots. So he worked mm -hmm. for the New England Patriots, and he. And he had those uh, four of them. So, you know, we all put them on and took pictures that that was a blast, you know, and like, yeah. it's like stuff, yeah, it's like stuff like that from tour, you know, I share food, I share, you know, other things, maybe um, uh, goings on stuff, you know, behind the curtain with the audio or things from my drum riser or from the tour bus or just, you know, out and about in general. So yeah, it's all kind of for humor. All of it's I love, for, for him. I love that. I love that. And it's kind of like bringing the Grammy around to see your friends, like bringing the Super Bowl rings around and you get to put them on and, you know, see those in person um, and share. And also on a side note, if anyone is having a golf tournament, Mike is a killer golfer. And I know this. I Yeah. yeah you, <laughs> we have won tournaments together, Mike. <laughs> and it's not We won. <laughs> we, we won. We won. <laughs> How many? I won. Uh, don't move. Oh boy! Don't, don't move, Sarah. How many? I think I did. I win three of these, or two or three of these. This you? is the uh, 2015 Zildjian Vikfirth. I'm not sure if this is the one that we won together. 
Uh, you know, it probably I think, was. I think it I might know. have been. I have I have some others too. I think we we maybe got. I think we won first place once and maybe second no, we, another time. No, we yeah. won. We we won. We won a couple of them at yep. least. I, I remember that. Uh, but you got him. I only have one little golf ball. But anyway, uh, no, no, no. I, I actually lost my chops with golf. You know, the golf courses were closed down. It's just not yeah. something if, – if you're not that good at it, you know, it's very, very difficult to get back to where you were. I used to be a couple decades ago. Then I could say, you know, I, I, I can play very well. I would consider myself a good golfer because um, I got in the 80s. So yeah. um, yep. um you know, that was average. And now, you know, I'm not in the 80s anymore. And I'm not just talking <laughs> about decades. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I have to get it back. So, anyway. But I'm oh fun. My gosh. I'm fun. It's fun. We we had an absolute blast playing together. And and you had all the pointers and all the tips. And I, I my short game is good. I think I helped out on the, on the short game. I'm an excellent mini golfer. If you ever want to go mini golfing, it's mm -hmm. great. But, but you're a killer golfer. But the other thing too, that you recently shared on Instagram, and I have to bring this up um, because I was so excited to see this photo that you shared. And I'm sure a lot of other people saw it too, but you posted a picture with you and Mike Portnoy together backstage at a dream theater show. Mm -hmm. And I was like jumping up and down about this picture pretty much literally because I know you and I know your personality and, and, and history and we've known each other for decades now. But um, for the public to see that display of friendship between you and Mike, I thought that was so important. Yeah, it, of course it is. It's, it's, it's a good thing. And again, you know, you know me. So that, that's to be expected. Um, well, that's the whole thing is that we were friends before I, I, you know, I, I got this job. I mean, literally, you know, he's <laughs> in my place in LA. Um, we're hanging out. He was the one that invited me to all the dream theater shows. Mm -hmm. He was the person I was closest with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he said all kinds of nice things about me all the time to people and in magazines. Um, and so, you know, the audition thing happened and he had left and it. That's kind of, our relationship kind of just went into a holding pattern and that was that mm -hmm. <laughs> or why, well, which I can, you know, whatever that means, it's just might've been awkward for him or whatever. Sure. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, we just kind of did our things. But um, what's, you know, what's interesting is with my audition, you know, I wasn't friends with them. I knew James cause I had done three records with him and con would consider him a, a friend you know, to a, to a point, but we didn't yap other than that. Portnoy was the one that was my friend. So the guy that left was the person I was closest with. Right. So, you know, it's like, and even for the audition, James had his, his current drummer, Peter Wildewer, into the Dream Theater audition. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I kind of had no, it was nothing, you know, uh, anything that was suggested that, I was friends with them and I was just given the job or anything like that. Cause it's totally mm -hmm. not true. Totally false, totally made up by whoever wants to make things up that they want to think. But it's funny cause I've explained this numerous times and I don't get listened to. It's like, I was there. It's me. I'm saying exactly what happened. <laughs> and there's plenty of, Oh, Oh no, no, no. That's not how it went. No, it's not what I heard, but well, I'm telling you what oh happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened. And, and it's interesting because you witnessed me, coming out of there because you were at a Zildjian event at SIR. Then I mm -hmm. asked you for some symbols and I didn't tell you, didn't tell you what it was for. I didn't, you know, leak anything out and you didn't pester me at all. Like I had to, you know, really pull myself out of, out of being reached by a lot of people. Cause a lot of mm -hmm. people could figure out that of course, you know, uh, I went there and it just, it just yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, most people get, get very intrusive, very nosy, and it's very uncool, but it's very understandable. Now, right. Uh, well, but anyway, you, yeah, you can people, do that. People want to know the scoop, right? Um, but yes, yeah, I, oh, I, so I was there. I didn't know what exactly was happening, but I did know that, um, you know, you were auditioning for something big, and I was just so excited for you. Um, 
and yeah. helpful. You were helpful with pick, picking those symbols out yeah. and providing them for me. And also, we, did. we had a fun day picking symbols for sure. Yep. Yeah. But you also witnessed me after, and I was truly. I wasn't I wasn't nervous about what would happen because I had a, such a such a good day that day. But I didn't know. I, I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I got to I'm nervous. I, I really mm -hmm. would like to do this. And who knows? I mean, these all the other drummers, uh, if they if they weren't already my friends, became my friend mm -hmm. after that. So I have close relationships with everybody. And I was nervous because I know that each of the drummers does something amazing that the other one doesn't do. That's the mm -hmm. beauty about Art and music is everyone has things that just is, is it their own and and I know how great they all are. So I'm like I, I don't know. All I know is that I didn't do anything um, that was a mistake to the point that it was noticed. I mean, it's a mm. it's a better way for me to describe it than for me to say um, I didn't make any mistakes that day or whatever. Well, I have to have to be clear that you know I I don't know that I hit this drum and I should have hit that drum. That's, that's not what I mean. What mm -hmm. I mean is I didn't, I didn't make any, nothing caused us to stop. Nothing was out of place. I got every single test the first time. The jam was pretty good. It's fun. I played mm -hmm. the songs correctly and had zero stops. Um, and I, it was that kind of thing. Like nothing was out, whether or not, you know, uh, I went to hit, a symbol in my hand went flying through the kit and hit, uh, smacked it or whatever, which didn't happen. But even if I did, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. It was, it was a, no. it was, it was a day I was on. And uh, you know, what's interesting as a technique that I used for auditions. Cause I have, I have had so many, I had so many before that in the neighborhood of oh, it's over 50 after losing one when I was 13. And mm -hmm. I remember the, I remember the reason I didn't get this particular school band thing. And I remember I was thinking all the wrong things. So it's not about not thinking. You can't shut your man, your mind off. It's about the right things to think at the right time. So when I auditioned after that, after that age 13 mm -hmm. debacle, when no one in my school band could believe it, they're like, what do you mean you didn't get the it's a little dinky kind of snare drum part. It was so easy to read and play, you know. Uh, I I was not there. I was somewhere else and thinking all the wrong things. So mm -hmm. before the Dream Theater audition, I, uh, I, I, I used these techniques and put myself in the room. What if this happens? What if that happens? And I wrote things down. I wrote mm -hmm. down what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. And so, you know, I it was comforting because I showed up with a duffel bag with I had like 20 other songs transcribed. I didn't know if they were going to ask me to play something else. I had extra sets of headphones. I had extra uh, ear, inner ear extensions. I had towels, pencils, paper, mm -hmm. all the stuff that, you know, you could easily forget. But it, until you, until you get your butt handed to you one day, because you didn't bring something that you really needed. And so I really prepared anyway. My point was that it was a great day. I was very, very prepared in every way you can imagine. I didn't make any noticeable mistakes or anything that mm -hmm. was out. Um, and I was very honest when I spoke to them. And uh, you you witnessed it. I I didn't know. I was like, I, I hope so, yeah. but I don't know. Right? I know. So this so this was at SIR in New York. And, and yeah. I was there hosting a Zildjian event. And Mike yeah. was there auditioning for Dream Theater, and it was super top secret, so we didn't know what was going on in the other studio. We just knew it was super top secret. So, we, uh, but I ran into you, and you were, you know, you you were nervous, right? But like, but like, really excited too. And I was just excited because I I wanted to hear like what it was and how everything went and. I just remember your energy that day and it was super positive. And then I was comfortable. You know, yeah, yeah. And then hearing about it afterward when you got the news and you could finally share what it was and, and all of that, it just was it was incredible. And at that point, I was just like, you know, that was it's per it was you're so perfect for that gig. It's just it's it's so great. So thank you. Well, there's a lot more. There's a lot more than just playing drum parts, but mm -hmm. it does come down, it does come down to the, to the music and playing them. So I, yeah. I try to honor them. I mean, nobody's going to sound like anybody else. That's, sure. that's crazy, crazy to even 
by the train, you know, but you can, mm -hmm. you can match things and mimic them to a point. And then, you know, depending on the, uh, on the gig, like, um, um, soon after I met you, which is one particular story and event and all that, but the, the modern drummer festival that you saw me play, I believe it was 2006, which was mm -hmm. not, it was not like the one I did in 90, nine was it yeah it had I to have been because so. i was I, I i think it was yeah so um it wasn't the same thing and the one you saw me play um i was asked to do a teaching thing i wasn't that's why i didn't do any kind of crazy drum solo or mm -hmm. have a big kit um but i i had and it's not on the dvd but i played uh to a zeppelin montage mm -hmm. and so it's like mimicking it and dennis asked me later when he saw me do it another time he said, how did you get the drumless Zeppelin tracks? I said, they're not drumless. I'm just landing my notes where they're supposed to go, even though yes. I'm never going to sound like the guy. But uh, whatever. So Dennis was very – it felt nice to hear him say that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. Of course. Yes. And we're, we're talking about Dennis Chambers, who we yeah, yeah. both love so, so much. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so that Modern Drummer Festival that you were referring to was – that was the first time I saw you – fully demonstrate your ability to play right-handed and left-handed and it was incredible you had the two yes. kits set up and you're playing these zeppelin tunes and you were switching back and forth one kit was set up right-handed one kit was set up left-handed and watching you just master and like you said you weren't playing to drumless track so you were like note for note just you know, hitting everything perfect, right-handed and left-handed. And I was like, my mouth was hanging open the whole time. And we've talked about it since because this, this performance is not out there. It's not out there for anyone to see. And I feel so lucky to have witnessed that back in 2006. And it is one of those things that sticks in my head when I think about you. And I think about like the great performances that I've ever seen, the great, great drumming performances. It's just right up there. So Thank you for that. You're welcome. I mean, part of what allowed me to really just be so at home and happy playing it. And so much is so much fun. I mean, you know, John Bonham's going to end up in the number one rock drummer slot of all time in every opinion poll out there. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, so well deserved. Um, and it's just a joy for those of us that grew up with it, just to, just to hear the music and play along with it. You're a little you're a kid again, but yeah. I knew that it wasn't going to be uh, uh, put out there because it's Zeppelin. You can't do that with Led Zeppelin music. They don't. They don't allow it. That I understand. So mm -hmm. it felt. That's part of why I did it in a way. As I'm like, you know, I, I don't know how this is going to go. But I'm just going to go for it anyway. Um, and I know it won't be put on a DVD. But my other, my other piece was put on. It was just a. You remember? It was like I went through like a whole long list of styles because again, I was, I was asked to describe how to, how to play different styles. So I wrote a piece of music that was like, it's all right. You know, I went through all mm -hmm. the Latin branches and swing and death metal and rock and regular metal. I did all that stuff and switched the kits. And, you know, again, it was okay. It was good enough for, for me to make a point. Uh, what wasn't okay is that I had just, <laughs> you know, fresh out of, um, uh, being a, a parent and not sleeping. And I played the show in my sweatpants pajamas. And <laughs> you know, I had the mess, most messy, awful hairdo. And pe people love to make fun of my look, all the, still to this day. I mean, whether it was that bowl haircut then or, you know, the, the real long, long hair that was like flattened. And I had my, uh, my Wayne's World glasses. And, uh, yes, and I like hat. that. I that just, was I don't, you know, I mean, again, I, I have fun with this stuff. And it really, now and lately, I think I'm accused of being a grandmother or something. Oh, it's no. Just, no. It's, so, it's so much fun for me in a way. I mean, I'm not ever going to get mad at it. I'm just going to be like, wow, I really, it's like inside of these heads and people are paying attention. Or there's just a right. lot of them with very clever. They got great senses of humor. They call me Severus Snape. I don't know. I'm, I'm just like, I'm Oh, my goodness. Of, I never made that of, connection, but. I don't know. Hysterical. Whatever. 
Well, you know, hey. the funny thing is, like, I don't remember you. I don't remember you drumming in that performance in sweatpants and and having crazy yeah. hair. I don't remember that. I just remember how great yeah. it was. So, you. you know, that's, that's what's important. <laughs> but I, right. when I met you, you had short hair. You had a short haircut. Um, and I and actually, I just have to talk about the night that I met you because it was one of my absolute favorite nights in this industry. My favorite nights of all time. Um, I had just started working for Zildjian and it was this John Blackwell tribute to his daughter, Gia, who had passed away. And it was the scholarship, um, that was being set up at Berkeley in her name. And there was a concert that was happening. Amazing, you know, drummers. It was, it was just incredible. The musicianship yeah. on that stage was unreal. And it was that um, way e each year that he did it. Yeah, you know, it, was, it was that way. I don't remember how many years, but anyway, go ahead and finish. Yeah, yeah. But this um, this night after that tribute concert, I found myself in a vehicle. John De Christopher was driving and I was in this vehicle with Dennis Chambers and Vinnie Colyuda, just kind of pinching myself that that this was happening. And, you know, we we drove to see Steve Smith play. He was in town playing and. We're in the restaurant watching Steve Smith play and Dennis is there and Vinny's there. And then you walked in and I was like, oh, my goodness, this is just the craziest night ever. And we had so much fun. And from that moment on, I was like, OK, that, you know, we're going to be friends forever because we just clicked and and your humor and my humor just went well together. Yeah. Um, but it what a night like that was just one of those times where I was thinking like, is this my life? <laughs> you know, that's just, and it's nice to see, you know, the drummers that truly, you know, you know, when nobody's looking, so to speak, you get along great. There's some of the best relationships that we all have because we understand each other. We talk about things. Nobody's, it's all good. Every bit of it's good, you know, yes. and um, uh, to just to be a part of it. To that night, especially even to be invited, it's just like it was so special because those three guys in particular are just, you know, you just once you get you're so great that you're over a line, you're just in a diff, you're just in, in the group of great yeah. people there. And they are all in that group for sure. And they're all wonderful people. Great to talk to. And uh, I, I certainly, you know, had fun just being there watching Steve. Like I, Absolutely. you know, did watching Dennis and Vinny and then finally sharing the stage with them at another Blackwell event. That <laughs> was fun. Yes, absolutely. Um, and those those events went on for a few years, I believe, which yeah. which was amazing. Um, I don't remember, but it was, yeah, it, was, it had to have been because it was time between when I met you and when I ended up doing one. Exactly, exactly. And speaking mm -hmm. of Berkeley... I want to make sure to touch upon the fact that um, you are a fantastic educator and you spent years teaching at Berkeley and now you teach from your facility and so many more people have access to you now to study yeah. with you, which I think is fantastic. So let us know how people can access your lessons and how they can study with you. All you have to do is look me up and drum lessons and ultimately you'll get uh, led to Rhythm Knowledge, which is the name of my books. But specifically, you go to rhythmknowledge.com and there's a tab that says register lessons. So you press that and it takes you to a page. I have a have an incredible system. It's automated. It's just like bulletproof, tremendous. Um, uh, and you just sign up for the class that you want to take and you get your slot and there's no rigmarole scheduling there's no going back and forth there's no extra steps it's you do anything and everything right there if you get it it's yours so and you don't have to pay for a plane flight you don't have to pay for a hotel you don't mm -hmm. have to pay for food transportation nothing uh, i just i just made the price you know really affordable in fact it is it's it's a lot less than now that i think about it it's significantly less than if someone were to study a half hour with me as a berkeley student Mm -hmm. You know, my hourly right there was jacked up from from what this is. So it's like a real right. and that was that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, right. So, well, uh, I, mean, I mean, maybe I should double the price. I don't know, Sarah. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, but it's but it's super cool that that, yeah. you know, because of technology, because of everything changing more recently, like so many more people have access to 
to yeah. you and and to your teaching yeah. and you teach all levels right so anyone right. who's interested can can reach out right yeah absolutely i mean the what what made me love teaching was that i was able to base my solutions for people on natural laws that make human beings human beings and how how things work you know mm -hmm. i've always uh, i've purchased those physics book how, how books how things work you know and whatever um but to base it on cognitive skills was was a good move because that leads to psych the psychology of a person it leads to how memory works it leads to how we can manage our senses and that's why i wrote those books that's why rhythm knowledge one and again it, someone can just go to rhythm knowledge and I've, it, it's explained on there, but what this is, but it made it so I was able to offer solutions that would work and not just would work for the person, but would work for every single person. Mm -hmm. Unfailing. I absolute mm -hmm. in the word, absolute, absolutely 100% success because they're based on things that make people work. So how can it not work for a person that is a people, you know what I mean? Yes. For the lack of lack of a better description with a little bit of humor in it. So um, that uh, it really, really helped. And when I was at Berkeley, I formed unbelievable relationships uh, with, with students and that lasted and they were, they were kind to me when it came, came to that time of the year where they would do the teacher evaluations and all that. So uh, it was just a great secular thing, very positive. So now I took all the skills that I learned for the group lessons at Berkeley and of course privates and put them into the zoom world of mine. And that's, that's what I do. I don't book them too far ahead though, or have them book too far ahead if someone else decides to, all right, this is what I need or I do. It doesn't matter, but um, I don't book like weeks at a time. Not mm -hmm. yet. Anyway, not mm -hmm. yet. I am going to do that once I'm sure of, of the dream theater plan for the year so uh but it's all going to be there you schedule and the other thing is if I, I if i schedule too far ahead the classes show up um vertically so that web page will take a long time to load it'll be like mm. it'll be a scroll long. so i just keep it keep it to like a week or two and that's it that's so great. Um, yeah. And I don't want to forget to mention that you have your solo album coming out soon. Soon. -ish, right? Well, I hope it's this year. I mean, it's, it's the last, the very last little part is halfway. And um, once that last chunk is in the can, then it'll be a very, very quick, turn around mixing it because the music is already mixed <laughs> has mm -hmm. been mixed for the better part of a couple of years or something. Uh, so um, that'll be a pretty quick process and I'll, I'll see what kind of, what kind of business I do, how I release it with who, if whatever I, I I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, but I hope it's out this year because it's been, it's important to me because of the, because yeah. the way it sounds, you know, yes, the way it sounds. And also, um, as much as I have written music, like actual, not just drum stuff and not just, oh, why don't we do this section here? And I'm kind of thinking, can you play a little bit like this other player? You know, you talk to your <laughs> bandmates. Could you do a little bit of a, you know, a, 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 a so-and-so, jump, jump, jump. Could you do, do a little bit of a so-and-so squeal? Can you try a little bit of a keyboard, blah, 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 like so-and-so? That's how you... You, you talk to people, but there's nothing like that. That's not how I do it. Um, mm -hmm. I actually wrote, you write notes on a keyboard because that way I can communicate to people. Of the, I just ask what key signature are you and where are you? And then I can come up with ideas and offer some here and there. I'm not a main, a main uh, person in the band with that end of it because look, look at who's in my band. I mean, these guys are so quick. By the time my fingers are on a keyboard trying to, figure out if it's O minus I have to hit or M plus, whatever it is. And I'm <laughs> thinking of something, you know, it's just because I hear things. I said, oh, yeah. Okay. By the time I do it, they've got three ideas on the table already. Yeah. And John and Jordan is zapping back and forth. And, you know, John, my young's raising his hand and then James will chime in because he's singing notes and then offering, you know, um, key or progression ideas based on what he's singing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, so, but it, it helps me communicate. Um, but for the solo album, I wrote absolutely 
every single note on the keyboard, virtual instruments or MIDI, but I, I composed absolutely everything. And then at one point I turned it over to some players who took it in and um, uh, occasionally would <laughs> offer things like, well, that doesn't work on my instrument. I'm like, I know, I know it was a keyboard, you know, <laughs> go ahead and just do it this way or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Oh, that's so great, <laughs> you know, though. That was fun. I, mean, I wrote it all, all the lyrics, you know. It's amazing, Mike. And I, and I, I have heard, I heard an early yeah. version um, and I, I'm so excited for this music to come out. I love it. It's so, so good. And um, so, yeah, I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear it with, yeah, you know, well, I mean, just just think about that time. I remember we we we, uh, we had some Zildjian business, so um, we went out, we ate mm -hmm. food, and then I played you this in one of our vehicles. I don't even remember, but whatever it was, um, I remember that what excited me the most to play it for you was that you could hear. And you couldn't just hear the cymbals better than anything I've ever been on because the cymbals are always buried. They sound mm -hmm. like you know, and then they sound like little hiss like 10k like tss, tss, tss. and it's like right. we, we we you know you're the one the people watching this person <laughs> picks the symbols and we have different alloys and so we might have one with more tin one with less tin one with more brass right and so mm -hmm. you get oh, yeah. that mixture for what the artist is trying to accomplish and then to do what to to what end you know mm -hmm. i even i don't even know that i even stopped sending you final albums that I don't send anymore because like, I'm not going to bother because as the symbols are buried of album after album after album after album mm -hmm. it's like good gosh you can't this does not sound like me so this yeah. this album is this is above and beyond more me than anything because it's me doing it you yes. know and and that but that also because I I actually enlisted Jimmy T to put that icing it's kind of how you know um uh it, it's kind of how oh, the progression is a is um it's, it's a long time in the making mm -hmm. you know and 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 that's and that's how it it came to be where it's not ultimately just fully totally me because he's uh, jimmy t's got to put his little bit of whatever in there but working together for so long and it's like no i this is how i sound i need to hear when i hit the symbol I want to hear it ringing two seconds later. And that's why I was happy mm -hmm. to play it for you. Cause like, can you hear the difference between that, you know, low line, so to speak, ZBT hat. And then, you know, the higher end K over yeah. here or the, or the a custom that's brilliant and it's thicker and it makes a, you know, makes the sound that it makes, but they sound so different from one another. Mm -hmm. And that is able to be perceived on this album. And um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. To a, you know, to a point, because what I learned are a couple of things. First of all, with everything else that I've done, you're working in a group. You're working with people. You have to morph to the group. And when something's out of your control, it's out of your control, which is why I sound so different on. And I'm not on that many records. I don't even know, 30 or 40 or something. I mean, I'm not one of the real studio players. You know, the guys that are on six or 700 albums. Oh, my gosh. But um, I'm just not that... I'm not that guy. Um, it's just something that I've locked into or whatever. Just somehow mm -hmm. it didn't work out for me or I didn't do it or I've always been in a band and teaching yeah. and those two things. But anyway, um, you know, you work with people. The end result morphs to the person in charge. That's mm -hmm. going to happen every single time. So whatever that result is morphs to that person who is making the call. And sometimes that person spreads the autonomy and sometimes that person – takes it and does everything that they want to do. It just depends on the situation. So, um, right. yeah, so it was, it, it was, it was interesting because I'd worked with Jimmy T long enough that I trusted him to, you know, also, I was like, this, we got to do this. We got to turn mm -hmm. that up, this one down, this one. I was like, oh, what do you mean? I'm like, I am smacking these cymbals. They are louder <laughs> than the snare drum. They are louder than the kick drum. They are louder than anything. They are the mm -hmm. loudest thing ever. So we had to like, we had to, and you know, he really was unbelievably helpful to me. He's like a good teacher too. So oh, I learned good. a lot. I, but I learned how to, yeah, I learned how to morph. And he's like, well, you don't want to do this in this setting. You don't want to do that in this setting. You better watch out 
with all that low end on the kick drum because you can't do that. It's going to like blow up the car speakers. And, right. You know, yeah. All that that's stuff. A good so point. yeah, we're going through it. He's, he's amazing. He's helping me and uh, whatever. So um, yeah, the solo album, I'm excited when it comes out. Cause it's, it is, it is a solo record, except that now I'm not the one playing every single instrument, but that's okay. Cause it came out better than my virtual instruments. <laughs> oh, it's a, I'm, I'm so, I'm so excited. I just yeah. can't, I can't wait. And I'm sure everyone listening will keep an eye out for mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. And rhythmknowledge.com to book lessons. Yeah. And yeah. Um, how else do people follow you? Facebook, Instagram? Yeah. yeah, as Bill Belichick would call it, Insta Face. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's on Instagram. It's, it's just a little bit. I'm not. I'm not big into that one. I kind of do it because I have to, and it's like it's just a few people. It's convenient for them more than yeah. Facebook. But the Facebook page is where. I've been interacting about my philosophies and classes and people's mm -hmm. thoughts. And it's been nice to engage, you know, because I didn't do it for most of the, my tenure with dream theater. I was not, it wasn't, right. it, it wasn't something that, that basically was wanted for me in mm -hmm. that group was to be online and, you know, posting and chirping about this and that and putting this out and that out or whatever, that people did. I just, it just, I just didn't do it. So much later on, I'm like, wait a minute. I, 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 I want to do this. I actually went and uh, engaged one day from seven in the morning until like 11 at night. Wow. And it was really interesting. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah. and it is such a part of everything that we do now, like promotion wise and, and all of that. But, but I enjoy your, your posts on Instagram and, you know, anyone listening should go and follow along and, you know, see what you're up to because you do have some great stuff happening. And the books um, that are that are in your head or on the paper, kind of, you have some things in the works there, too. So, oh, yeah, 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 more. yeah. Yeah. I'm expanding rhythm knowledge. I had written volumes three, four and five, so to speak, if they're mm -hmm. going to be called that in that way. But I had written those um when I was still at Berkeley, in mm. fact, in fact, it's one of my former students from Berkeley that is my new, my new co-writer guy, you know, that's the, going to take my 95 paragraphs and boil them down into two, like Frank used to. Frank would say, uh, is this what you meant? Is this a better way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Blah. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, so that's Rhythm Knowledge. It's uh, and the third one. In fact, I in fact, I have to remember, I have a Zoom meeting on that. It might be tonight or tomorrow. I don't even remember. Oh, I have no. to follow up. Yeah, yeah I got to follow up and get it get it settled. It's not that far away. Also, mm -hmm. all the videos I'm making, my Vimeo, my Vimeo is doing, doing well because the two most important rhythm knowledge systems, check this out. I not only made them into courses, the not quite doubled pattern recognition system so people know what they're doing. They know mm -hmm. what they're listening to. You know, they recognize rhythms, you know. And then the clockwise, counterclockwise limb system, which wires up every possible pair, including guitarists and string players and saxophone wind players, four fingers. There's this exercise. It's just it's a one-of-a-kind thing. But those two systems are on Vimeo, and I made Practice With Me series on that. So people can purchase them in chunks. So you're looking at me in your mirror image and literally practicing with me. Oh, um, great. It's unbelievable. I've panned everything so that if someone's like doing the limb system and they're looking at their computer screen or their device screen, mm -hmm. if they see that they're looking at it, if they see the hand on this side, that's their left hand and my right hand. So I, mm -hmm. I, I you know, I, I reversed images. I did everything backwards so that wow. people could do it. So I hadn't seen that done before ever. So it's a great coaching yeah. system that, you know, you're going to do your reps and learn it. So that Vimeo is great. I'm going to do some more, but I just wanted to get those basic systems up with coordination and some technique, not like over the top technique, but just enough mm -hmm. to get people going. And so beginners, can can study and they shouldn't be afraid to sign up with me because you know I'm not an intimidating person and the material no. the material is only intimidating in people's minds until they find out what it actually is and I dumb it down as far as um, just just simplify it is is a better mm -hmm. way to say it but I mean that's why I'll say that for me mm -hmm. but uh, for other people I will simplify 
to the to the skeletal uh, fundamentals. You know, I mm-hmm. go right down to the fundamentals and then build up from there. And for someone that has a bad habit, I can re help that person make the new connections to reform those because that's a very difficult thing to do. You can't just take a bad memory or a traumatic thing or a poor technique and just you know, like a computer mm-hmm. screen, you take the file and you drag it to trash. You cannot right. do that. So yeah, no, that's a really good point. But I, I love that mm-hmm. though. That sounds that mm-hmm. sounds incredible. And I will put the links for all of those things in the podcast description and in the YouTube description as well, because I know that people are going to want to go and check them out and follow along and sign up for lessons and yeah. watch out for your um you know the content that you have coming out i'm super excited about it and i'm sure there are a lot yeah. of people listening who are as well yeah you know and speaking of youtube i, I wish people would subscribe to my channel because then you know when i pop a new one up and i've been doing it lately and i have a lot of footage in fact i yes, have stuff in do. the can i yep. want to be yeah when this podcast comes out i'm going to be putting out more of these playing videos that people want so um just just get on the youtube channel and um uh what else oh my gosh there's so much oh just so that i say it just because it has to do with why this is even happening today and how i got through these challenges being forced to stay in a in, in a facility or a basement or your house, you know, mm-hmm. for the time we were forced into that, whatever you want to call it. Um, mm-hmm. Bottom line, and uh, I'm not well about it, but um, I'm well with what happened from it, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, as far as what I built. But the thing is, um, with, with, with all that said, this whole, this whole world of like tapping into what I'm doing is really based on relationships because Mm -hmm. that's why this is happening today. Um, That's how I got these, it's all these cameras and the extra microphones, microphone cables, microphone uh, stands, Mm -hmm. the drum, the drum heads, the cymbals, the drums, the pedals, the uh, even, you know, all these interfaces. I had to buy so many interfaces to become an, a deeper audio engineer. I had to become a video videographer, a video editor, mm-hmm. all of those things, you know, a, mix, a better mix engineer, a better audio engineer, but even the relationships with the stores uh, or the outlets that were formed over the years through dream theater, through other bands and knowing you and you know me and, and we both know, Carrie of AAF who went through her thing and we both talked to her and we talked to each other yes. and, Oh, we got to get what, do you, what microphones do you use and who's coming over and, you know, and then the yeah. pandemic is like, well, no one wanted anyone in their house or their place. With it. Right. <laughs> They're like, get away from me. Oh so, my gosh. Uh, all, that, all that BS. But, uh, you know, the, anyway, the whole thing is the relationships were a big part of how everything got formed. So here That's we are. Crazy. And, I don't know what else you got or I, I love good? that, Mike. I just want to I just want to reiterate. I always say it's all about the relationships. And I feel like that yeah. is what got us through. That's what got us, you know, to where we are right now. And you just mentioned Carrie and K- Mistress Carrie. We I want just want to give a shout out. Everyone yeah. go check out Mistress Carrie's podcast. I will link it. She's fantastic. She interviews all kinds of musicians, people in the industry. <laughs> Um, she has amazing guests on. Mike has been a guest of of hers. Um, I have been a guest on her podcast as well, and we just love her so much. So check out her podcast too. But the it's bo- the Boston yeah. contingent. Exactly, we have a very strong contingent. I I just you know we all support each other, love each other so much, and I can't wait to see you in person, Mike. We'll have to I'll have to hold that Grammy soon. <laughs> Oh, I'll let you. (laughs) All right. Until then, you take care and I will see you soon. All right. Take care. Thanks for today. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.